Nature can be very complicated, but knowledge-seeking creatures you are. We always tried our best to model certain natural events with mathematical equations. These equations are often partial differential equations, and solving them helps us understanding our world better. Doing it analytically is almost always very complicated, but luckily there is a way to do it numerically. So this video will be split into two videos. The first one talking about how we can solve PDEs, for instance the heat equation, numerically. And the second part will be a coding tutorial on how to do it with Python. And for instance, suppose you are welding two iron plates together and after finishing you want to pick it up with your hands. Silly indeed. But let's consider this practical example and say that intuitively you would hold the far end of the plate. As you might know, welded metal can get hot pretty fast, but the question is how fast does it actually get hot? Well, to know whether you would burn your hands or not. Since there is an evident symmetry, let's only consider just one plate. Let's assume for the sake of simplicity that the welding flame is initially distributed across the line connecting the two plates. Let's also suppose that your hand's skin withstand up to 50 degrees Celsius before getting damaged. Alright, let's see how much time it takes before the held area reaches 50 degrees, characterized with some heat propagation rate, which we will discuss about later on. As you can see, it took less than 2 seconds to reach 50 degrees. So, morality, never touch welded plates with your hands. How we found this, you might ask? Well, this is exactly what the heat equation is about. But before diving deeper into this uh, equation, let's see what a PDE actually is, or commonly known as a partial differential equation. Generally, PDEs are made to describe and model certain events occurring in nature via a mathematical equation and this equation links the variation of a physical entity across different variables. Generally, it is a temporal variation of an entity to its spatial variation. In a way, to predict the value of a given entity at a given position p and at a given time t. Now, Fourier's heat equation describes the evolution of the temperature t on a metal rod, plate or cube across time and space. The spatial variation is linked to the temporal variation via the parameter alpha. So alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the material expressed in millimeter square over seconds. It describes how fast the temperature travels across a surface. Well, higher values of alpha leads to a faster heat distribution and lower values leads to a, well, slower distribution. Now, solving this type of equation is crucial as it helps us understanding the beauty of this world, but how do we solve PDEs in general? So, when it comes to solving a partial differential equation, there is really two approaches to do so, either analytically or numerically. The methods used to solve a equation analytically really depends on the studied problem, the initial and boundary conditions, and so on. But generally, there are five ways to do so. Now, for some problems, and in fact most of the problems, the analytical solution isn't really in our favor, as we might not know how to solve it in the first place, or the boundary conditions doesn't respect certain conditions, etc. Whereas numerical solutions are extremely abundant, and helps us approximate in most cases the solution. There is also a multiple solving methods when it comes to numerical resolution. The finite difference method is the most used one in engineering for its simplicity. It is in fact a very important concept in engineering. But what actually is the FDM? The FDM is a method used for solving ODEs or PDEs by approximating derivatives with finite differences. There is multiple approaches when it comes to the FDM. All in all, they use the same solving logic. Okay, so do you remember the Tyler series, which I happen to have a video about it? 
But as a brief reminder, it is a way to approximate a function with a infinite sum of its derivatives. The more terms of this series you compute, the better the approximation is. But what if we limit ourselves to the first two elements? Let's say you want to evaluate this expression at two equidistant points from x0, for example x0 plus h and x0 minus h, where h is a very small number. We will find that by subtracting the second expression to the first one, we will get this. And then after rearranging, we just found a way to express the derivative of our function at x0. There is also a small note where, depending on the two points you choose to express the derivative, there is three possible approaches, the central, forward and backwards differentiation. So the forward differentiation is taking x plus h and x, the backwards is x and x minus h, and the central is the one we just did. To really understand and appreciate what is happening, Let's look at the central differentiation in a graphical way. Let's consider some random function f that we want to evaluate its derivative at x equals 8. Analytically, it's pretty obvious doing it the classical way, and lo and behold, we will find 2.7. Doing it the numerical way results in evaluating the slope, or secant, of the function so calculating dy over dx and if we zoom enough to get very very small values of h we can evaluate the slope once again evaluating delta y over delta x and we almost get the same result we can also approximate the second derivative of our function by expressing three terms of the tyler series then adding up the two expressions and uh, rearranging, we get this result. Of course, the work remains the same for higher order derivatives. Now, let's keep in mind the first two derivative expressions and take a look at the heat equation once again. You can notice that our function t is a four variable function, but for simplicity, let's only consider the variation across x and t. Know that the Tyler series can be expressed for a multivariable function, where instead of computing fa, you compute f of a1, a2, and a3, and so on, for each variable, and then instead of computing only df over dx at a times x minus a, you compute this. Now we want to find a way to express the time derivative of the temperature and the second x derivative of it. So let's adapt this series to our function t, as we did previously. We want to express this expression at two points, but in this case it is 2d coordinate points. So the remaining question is, how do we choose the correct values for a1, b1, and a2, b2? To help us, here is the numerical grid with a line with three nodes where each node represents the temperature at the position x minus dx, x and x plus dx, and a vertical line with two nodes representing the temperature at t and t plus dt. Notice how what we are really looking for is the starting point and ending point of the lines. Keeping this in mind, let's go back to our coefficients a and b, and let's adapt them to our lines. And turns out we will get these coefficients. So this for the time variation and then this for the space variation. Now we're placing these two expressions in our equation and rearranging and we did it. We found a way to predict the future temperatures. Now all you have to do is to plug this expression in your script or PC and then loop through it with time. For example at starting from t equals 0 until 10 seconds. And with that, we just solved the heat equation numerically. Now you might ask, why did we consider the forward derivative for the time and not the other ones? 
Well, in a way, in practice, knowing how a certain model behaves currently, so at t equals t0, we want to predict its future behaviors, so at t equals t0 plus dt. Simply. There is two things you have to keep in mind though to be able to compute this expression. The first thing is that the distribution of the temperature at t equals 0 across space needs to be known, and there needs to be boundary conditions of the studied space, so you can compute the terms next to the boundaries. Why do we do this, you might ask? Take for example this metal rod made out of 10 nodes that we will split into 10 rods where each rod represents the distribution of the temperature at a given time. Since the distribution is known at t equals 0, let's jump to the next rod. The temperature across all the nodes can be evaluated with the final expression we found, except the boundaries. If we don't set the boundaries to some values or some constant, it is sadly not possible to evaluate future temperatures. Though this is not a very big problem, because you can still set the boundaries to some function changing with time. For example, at t equals 0, the boundaries are 20 degrees Celsius, and then at 2 seconds they are equal to 60 degrees Celsius, and then at until 10 seconds they will be equal to 100 degrees Celsius, for example. So. With this, uh, this video comes to an end. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, of this style, and if it was useful. Leave a like and maybe share the video if you enjoyed the content. This uh, motivates me tremendously to keep going. And on this note, thank you and have a wonderful day.